Is Alibaba still the number one place to be sourcing your Amazon FBA products? Today, we're gonna to find out just that. Today, we're gonna to go through all the different websites that you could be using to source your Amazon FBA products, but not just websites. We're gonna give you some other options as well, including going to China, uh, going to trade shows, and things like that. So let's jump right into it, and let's start off with Alibaba. So Alibaba is probably the website that you're most familiar with, right? So it is the leading business e-commerce platform for global trade. There's zero doubt that both small and large companies source from Alibaba. At the end of the day, it's where most Amazon FBA sellers end up going to, partially because it's the most well-known and also because it has the most features, it has the highest protections than anybody else, like things like trade assurance, and it's just easy to use at the end of the day. So I, I find a lot of people use Alibaba because it's easy, but are there better options? Next is Global Sources. Global Sources is the number two largest sourcing platform in the world, only number two to Alibaba. And Global Sources pretty much looks kind of similar to Alibaba if you look at it, right? So this is essentially what the UI looks like. I think most of these sourcing websites kind of look similar. You may or may not see the same factories here based on, let's say if you started your search on Alibaba. This is a great place for electronic products, but the quantities are higher. What the require of you to buy is actually higher. Let me see if I could find some electronic product here. So let's go to Auto Electronics, Advanced Driver Systems. This is probably gonna bring up, yep. Uh, things like dash cams, right? So here you'll see MOQ here, and pricing's great. So $23 to $24.15, uh, but the MOQ is a thousand pieces, right? So the, the, the quantities are higher, but the quality will naturally be higher because you're spending more money here and the customization is gonna be higher as well because you are spending more money. This isn't as good for the beginner, for example, because um, it's just the barrier of entry is too high. They also verify their manufacturers. So you can see here, there's a bunch of different manufacturer badges. So you do have uh, similar protections as Alibaba, but the biggest downside here is the fact that you need more money to play here, right? Because uh, the MOQs are so much higher compared to a website like Alibaba. Next is 1688, and I have a secret to tell you. 1688 also happens to be Alibaba.cn. See, check this out. It's basically the same website, okay? So this is Alibaba, okay? But it's in Chinese. Now, the thing is, you can probably get better pricing on this website, but everything else falls apart when it comes down to communication and all that. So what you could do is you can maybe get someone who speaks Chinese and help you with this website and you could likely get better pricing. That's really the only, only advantage here of going this route in my in my opinion, that's really the only advantage. So if you happen to have maybe a virtual assistant or someone who speaks Chinese, this could be a way to go or at least try it anyway. So maybe you could do a bit of both, right? So what we like to do is source, try to source everywhere on all the different websites. So let's say you find something on Alibaba, it might make sense to then come here and go to 1688 and alibaba.cn with your maybe Chinese assistant or counterpart or whatever and see if you can get better pricing. You will see the same stuff, if not maybe some extra factories on here uh, compared to Alibaba. The pricing's better, but the communication is frankly trash. Next is madeinchina.com. So it, once again, this looks kind of similar to the other websites. Yes, it has things like consumer electronics, right? But it's really, this website's really about all the industrial equipment. So things like hydraulic pumps and, you know, those kinds of products are, are the best sorts of products to uh, source from here. Uh, once again, in this instance, the, the quantities are higher and so is the quality, right? But quantities are very high. Someone sourcing on this website would probably also be someone who's trying to source on a website like ThomasNet, which we'll talk about next, uh, where it's more industrial kind of products. This website is the third biggest global sourcing website and also has similar assurances in place like things like they audit their supplier. So they essentially call their supplier or buyer protection, they call their buyer protection audited suppliers, right? So that's how you know uh, that they actually went ahead and, and checked into the suppliers and did a little bit of due diligence. I have to be honest, I'm not too familiar with what that process is of what that actually means, but they do have some assurances in place. Um, once again, this is better for big industrial products and not so much the small commodity products that a lot of Amazon sellers are selling on the platform today. Next is ThomasNet. ThomasNet is pretty much known for its local sourcing. So by local, I mean here in the US. So there's quite a few companies that are on ThomasNet in the US. So if you're looking to source locally here in the US, ThomasNet's the place to go. The thing is there's essentially less suppliers on ThomasNet. The pool is smaller because there's just less you know, suppliers here in the US. This is similar to madeinchina.com where there's more industrial kind of based products, right? So you kind of have to think about what kind of products are really being made here in the US, right? So you're not gonna get a lot of those small commodity products because really China took that over. Communication on this website is fantastic because you're dealing with native speakers. 
The issue with this website is the quantities. So you are dealing with companies based here in the US. So we're talking 100,000 piece orders. Maybe I'm over exaggerating just a tiny bit, but don't be surprised if you see MOQs of up to you know 100,000 pieces. But you're not getting into this for a couple hundred pieces on ThomasNet. These companies are looking for big business. To be honest with you, it's kind of a shame. Um, I see this more and more with local suppliers. It's hard to do business here in the US. I think things need to change there, but that's another topic for another day. This isn't Thomas Nett's fault. If you're looking for local suppliers and you got a wad of cash, this is the place to go. Next is dhgate.com. So a lot of people got their start on dhgate. A lot of people selling on Amazon right now. I'm talking multi-million dollar sellers. It's a great place to start because you can get very low quantity orders, as in like MOQs of like 5, 20, like really small orders, and you can get some decent pricing, not great pricing. The problem here is the quality isn't so great and legitimately there's just a lot of people selling on there that are not necessarily factories, right? So there's a lot of middlemen and middle women on there, but nevertheless, there's nothing wrong with dealing with a trading company in that instance, especially if they're able to provide you with smaller quantities. This is a great way to test an item for Amazon before you go ahead and go crazy with some kind of customization and differentiation. So if you have a low budget, if you just wanna kind of dip your toe in and see what this is all about, this isn't a bad place to start. They have great assurances in place where you don't really have to worry about somebody just taking off with your money. Um, you're gonna get your products on this website. You're gonna get them pretty fast as well. And that's really because nothing's really customized. Uh, from my experience, they'll do like maybe a hundred piece order and maybe just put a logo on it, depending on what the product is, maybe something they could laser etch or something like that. But for the most part, this isn't about customization. You're not gonna find a great factory on here necessarily. You're just gonna find products that are mediocre quality that you could just kind of test out a market with. Next is Zipfox, which is a newer player. They are a newer player in this whole sourcing game, and they're the largest marketplace for nearshore product sourcing. What this basically means is they like to source in Mexico, South, and Central America. And they're trying to be the next Alibaba, okay? They're trying to be the next Alibaba, but their whole idea is to source out of Mexico and South and Central America. There could be some benefits here because if you look, even look here, look at the estimated delivery, okay, June 25th. So this stuff here will be available right before summer. To give you an idea, right now is mid-April, right? So that's not so bad. They have even sooner lead times than that. The benefit to this is, it's not just about the production lead time. It's that this, these products will be trucked into the US as opposed to be sent via sea freight. So even if the product pricing is a little bit higher on this website, you could potentially save on shipping. And not just save on shipping, you can have smaller lead times, which can help you later on in business when you're trying to basically cash flow the business. Like I said, this is a newer player in the market. I don't know too much about it, but so far it looks pretty good. So it's just something that you should potentially consider, especially if you don't mind sourcing in Mexico, South or Central America. Next is trade shows and exhibitions. I find this strategy works better for people once they have somewhat of an established brand. Because what happens when you have an established brand, you start going to trade shows and exhibitions, right? So let's say you have a, a brand in the, the pet category. You will start going to trade shows in a pet category and you will see new products are coming out. You'll meet all the manufacturers and you could potentially set up a deal that way and essentially private label or white label their products. So there is potential in sourcing here. They may make some of their products overseas, they may make them here locally, but what you're essentially doing is setting yourself up for success because a lot of the product development's already been done at that point, right? This is also a great way to find unique products because if you're like on a normal sourcing website, everybody's looking at the same product, so it's really hard to differentiate and truly offer a unique product. The odds are you could be the first to market. Next is sourcing agents. I'm not really sure why sourcing agents get such a bad rap, but at the end of the day, uh, they will help you save money. Okay, yes, they make a percentage, right? And they're very clear about that. They tell you up front, hey, I want, you know, 1%, 2%, 5%, whatever it may be, right? Do the math yourself, right? Go ahead and look on these different websites um, and get an idea of what it would cost if you were to go direct. Then add in the price of you potentially making a mistake, okay? They will help you avoid mistakes and they will take accountability and responsibility for your product. And I got a little fun fact for you. They will probably get you a better price because they speak Chinese and you don't. So even if they are making something in between, what do you care, okay? Everyone needs to make money, right? So at the end of the day, they will get you a better product and you have a lower likelihood of making an expensive mistake. So I'm all about sourcing agents, especially for new Amazon sellers. You could, of course, always jump on a plane and go to China. My favorite place to source from is Ewu. Ewu is huge. It's the biggest wholesale market in the world. I will warn you though, 
When you go to Iwu, if you decide to take the trek over to China, I'm sure you'll be there for a couple weeks, right? You're not a psychopath like me going there for just a couple days. That's happened. Um, but if you go to Iwu, make sure you have at least a full week to spend on the ground because I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. You're going to go there fully prepared with exactly what you want. You will already know what product you want. Then you will pay a little bit of money, not much. You'll pay a little bit of money and get yourself a sourcing assistant slash translator. And that person will help you throughout the week to go through the market and find exactly what you came for. Being very specific about this for a reason. Once you find what you came for, hopefully that'll happen in three to four days. Okay. Maybe sooner. Then you could do what I like to call freestyling and just walk around and try to find new stuff, right? Some say Iwu has lower quality products, as in inferior products. Anywhere you go source in China, you're gonna get like inferior products and you get really good products. I'm sure if you source here, you'll get the same thing, right? If you, if you want crap, you're gonna get crap, right? If you spend more, you'll get a better product. What people fail to recognize is there's so many factories in Iwu that you can find the perfect partner for you. And in addition to this, they will customize. So once again, people say you can't customize an Iwu. Yes, you can, but you can't customize if you're just ordering 50 pieces. So this makes complete sense. So what you could do is you can go there and buy like a whole bunch of different sorts of products and just invest in 50 pieces per product, see what works, and then really differentiate the product and scale it up. This is why I like the whole idea of sourcing in China so much is because there's so many different possibilities. And I kind of like the second part where you're kind of freestyling and finding really unique stuff because you, if you find those unique things then you know you'll be first to market and you can have a huge edge on, on other Amazon sellers. So at the end of the day, there's a ton of different options for you to source your Amazon FBA products. Is Alibaba the best or the worst? It's neither. It really depends on you. You need to know what is best for you. You need to understand, you know, how much money do you want to invest? Um, you know, how much product can you afford? How much work do you actually want to do? What kind of products do you want to source? This all depends on which specific sourcing website you actually end up using. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this video right here.